Hi guys, it's Master Coach Tony Morgan and today's video is on our final one on the back to Geotech using our fault analysis quadrant. So in today's quadrant we're going to be talking about losing pressure and increasing pressure inside the boiler. So as normal we're going to be doing questions and answers and you'll listen to the questions being asked and I'll answer them to my best of my ability. Okay, Tom, so fire away, what you got for me for today? Hey, Tony, um, I think on this stuff it was also quite a few issues that can be related to this here, and my first question was regarding the expansion vessel. I mean, this can be caused both by losing and increasing pressure scenarios, can't it? Well, yeah, it can. So let's look at it losing pressure. So the obvious thing we're going to check in the expansion vessel, we're going to check the... Here on the Schrader valve, see what pressure's in there, see if it's on zero. If it is, then we're gonna pump up air into the expansion vessel, and then that should hopefully solve the problem of losing pressure, because what'll happen, that when it's hot, then the pressure will increase. You'll see it register on the pressure gauge, go up to three, then on heating mode, and then that'll open a PRV, that'll leak outside and then once the, it contracts, cools, that water is then gone or diminishes and the pressure gauge is going to be showing like half a bar or less. After a bit if that happens over a period of time, the pressure switch here will be activated and then you're going to get a fault code on the front of the boiler, E119, same low pressure. So that's what kind of happens on these boilers. Um, customers will say, I keep topping up the system maybe every week or two weeks, and that's a basically a recurring cycle. What happens when there's no air inside the expansion vessel? Now, equally, this cycle, what I just said, can happen, but through a different problem. And what we can have is, let's look, go back to here, we put the pressure in, put air pressure in there and we say, oh, it's on one bar, it's no problem with the air pressure. If that's the case, going off what the customer said, what I just said, then you could be looking at a blockage in the tube pipe, connecting pipe here, going up to the expansion vessel. So you follow that round, see where it goes. So actually it's going in here. So you need to check this tube, it's clear because if that's blocked, then the expansion cannot take place. It cannot go into the expansion vessel and it'll basically just do a repeat of what I just said. Is that okay? Yeah, that's that's pretty, that sounds pretty um, awesome there. Um, another one I thought about here, the, the PRV, obviously that only is supposed to open when it's above three bar, correct? So yeah. if you're losing pressure, could it well be that's maybe faulty? Yeah, indeed, yeah, that can be faulty. What can happen, um, as I said, if that's a repeating process of expansion, the pressure going up to three, it can basically weaken the spring, dirt can be on it, so it can be dribbling. So in that instance, once you do the expansion vessel here, it might be an idea to replace that as well. I'll just tell you about this PRV. There's two types of PRVs. Um, if you look a bit closer, um, on the main, um, usually the main one actually, but even on the backs of Jotex as well, and the Positons, there's another one which the head's a bit bigger. So this black part here, the hexagon part, is bigger. And they're not interchangeable. So what I would do, take a picture of the PRV, so when you go to your supplier, show them the picture because they can give you the wrong one, and then you go to the job and it doesn't fit. Especially what I would do, I wouldn't be taking out the whole of this valve because you can see it's quite involved job. The pipe work, trying to unscrew, well, there's an Allen key, holds it on. So I just change the head, grip it here, and unscrew it out from the body. But as I said, take a picture of it and then you can show your supplier so you don't get the wrong one. Something to watch out for. 
Right, anything else you'd like to ask? Yeah, Tony, looking at this here, like some other issues that might be going on with the losing pressure here in the bother. Um, um, the, the diverter cartridge itself, do you actually see um, like what are leaking out of there? Or? Yeah, now these are classic for doing this. Now, what would happen is, looking at the diverter valve here, you'd have water coming down here. So basically, it's leaking out the pin and then that would lose pressure because the primer water is coming out and then what can happen as well it can damage the actuator in fact some instances the boiler will have electrical short circuit and then there's no display because it's blown these fuses which are here these get blown so if they're blown go straight to here take the actuator head off and see any water inside it and if it is it's because this is leaking. So you can lose pressure through that, yeah. Right, okay. Uh, another issue on the, um, the like losing pressure, of, if obviously you can look at your radiator valves um, or else maybe even your pipe working with the property because let's just say your boiler, you've looked at quite a few things and you decide to go look at your radiator valves. Um, is that something that can be a telltale sign of pressure loss? Well, if, like I said, if you've examined the other areas and you can't see no leaks, etc., then yeah, go around the radiators, check, you know, your TRVs, they could be leaking, the glands could be leaking. If they're all great, then it could be pipe work. What I would do in that situation, you'd probably add some leak sealer. If it's a small leak, add some leak sealer into the system. And hopefully that can seal up if it's a small leak. That can solve the problem. Okay. Uh, do you, is there such a thing as like um, you can get a hole in your radiator that can cause this as well? Oh yeah, definitely you can get old radiators. But again, most people notice that. You notice that pretty obvious. But anything what's going to be like a radiator valve, radiate itself, it's all going to indicate on the pressure gauge and then drop the system. Yeah, and uh, I was also thinking about it, um, you know, filaments, and they can they can also cause like increasing pressure if if um, if they're passing through. Is that right? Well, absolutely. Yeah, that can do this. So what we're gonna do? I'll just show you like two little scenarios. What you need to look for regarding the filling loop. How I treat this is um, I think about the boiler been hot or cold so either been on or off so if it's off that's it's cold so that means I'm looking at the cold water inlet could be causing a problem for the pressure to rise so you've either got a fill loop issue or you could have a hot water heat exchange issue so let's look at the fill loop on this one it's got an internal fill loop some of them can get external ones, so you can see that's open. Now, if they were closed, or if it's partially open, that's going to make the water rise up. So, if you let's look at the pressure gauge, so if that pressure gauge was sort of like on one, and after about half an hour increased, that's when the boiler's off, then you know it's either filling loops, it's not turned off properly. Or you've got a problem with the plate heat exchanger, it could have a little hole in it. So you need to either disconnect the fill loop entirely. Once that's disconnected, then you know it's not that route. And if it continues to build, then you've got a hole in the plate heat exchanger. So that's what you've got to kind of look at. So when it's cold, it's going up, cold water inlet cold water main that's what's making it go up so think of it like that then if it's hot then it's to do with expansion so look at what we said earlier what I said how the expansion vessel behaves if it's heating up on the hot side expansion vessel oh sorry if the pressure is going up on the hot side then it's expansion vessel side if it's going up on the cold when it's off, then it's cold water inlet side. 
fill and loop hot water heat exchanger. Does that make sense? Yeah, Tony, um, you, you mentioned on the uh, the hot water heat exchanger that you can have a, a pinhole in there which also causes loss of pressure. Can the same be said for the, the main heat exchanger? Well, on that, what I just said was that's more for increasing the pressure going up. For the pressure going down, then you, about the main heat exchanger, then that's going to cause the pressure to go down. Now, what you could do, um, if we go back to the pressure gauge, so let's look at it being cold. So the boiler's off, nothing's working, but yet the pressure's going down. So we've looked at all the other areas, like radiator valves, pipe work, nothing, no problems with that. So what I'd be looking at is checking the condense line because inside of here, you could get water, which is pinholed inside the main heat exchanger, drops down into the condensate pipe and out there through the condensate. So you could take the trap out, see if water's continually dripping all the time. If it's dripping all the time when the boiler's off, then you've got something to do with the main heat exchanger. The primary water is dribbling out through the condensed line and out. And then hence, the pressure's going down, losing pressure on the gauge. So that's common in these condensating boilers. That's kind of one of the drawbacks with these the do pinhole and actually these can happen quite frequently you can also take out the burner so you can move these bolts take that out and look inside and see if there's any water in there because there should be no water in there and if there is again it's got a hole in the main heat exchanger so that's it on this video that's it on this quadrant so we've gone through the four quadrants so go through all of them and hopefully you'll learn a lot using this structure of the fault analysis quadrant because this is a great system for you to use to adopt so when you go into a boiler you can use that help you think what the possibilities could be and you can refer to one of these quadrants to help you pinpoint the problem so that's going to be the end of this video and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.